What is going on everyone? I am Star Wars Analyst. If you're new to my channel, I love to break down and analyze all sorts of deleted scenes and scrapped ideas that just did not make it into the final cuts of the Star Wars films. I recently made a video analyzing a scene where a group of Jedi actually led a raid on a droid control ship, and soon I'll be analyzing a scene where Palpatine gives Anakin a red kyber crystal. So if you're into this sort of stuff and you aren't subscribed, you definitely want to, and you also want to make sure to hit the bell icon so that you're always notified whenever I upload a new video. I also just want to take a second to remind everyone that I am giving away a Darth Vader Force FX lightsaber. These are premium $400 lightsabers, so you definitely do not want to miss this opportunity. I'll have instructions on how to enter the giveaway at the end of this video, so be sure to stay tuned. Before the prequel trilogy came out, Star Wars fans all had their own ideas and theories regarding Anakin's turn to the dark side. I think the thing that everyone was looking forward to the most from the prequels was Anakin becoming Darth Vader and just straight up wreaking havoc on the Jedi Knights and all of his enemies. As someone who grew up on the prequels, I absolutely love them, but I can see why some OG fans could be disappointed. After growing up on the original trilogy, these fans had 20 years worth of their own theories and expectations of Vader's backstory. We don't even really see suited up Vader until the end of the final prequel. Yeah, the Obi-Wan and Anakin duel is awesome, but I know a lot of people were expecting and looking forward to seeing Anakin hunt down and slaughter a bunch of Jedi. This is what I would say is the biggest missed opportunity in the prequels. When Anakin leads the clones into the temple to massacre the Jedi, we literally don't see him do much of anything. All we see is him igniting his saber on the younglings, but why couldn't we see him kick some Jedi ass? I love the whole Order 66 scene, and even though these are some of my favorite moments in Star Wars, I recognize that they still could have been so much more. Aside from these scenes, the only other time we get to see the Wrath of Vader is when he's slaughtering the Separatists on Mustafar. In the original script, this scene would have actually been way more gruesome with heads being chopped off and rolling all around the floor. There was a bunch of extended footage that was recorded for this scene that never made it to the final cut, so let's break it down. In the final version that we got in the film, we see Anakin walking into the Separatist hideout and then he begins closing the doors with the Force, trapping them inside with him. The scene immediately cuts away to Yoda and Obi-Wan attacking some clones. However, in the extended footage, we would see Anakin ignite his lightsaber and quickly take out these useless Nemonian guards. The script reads, Guards grab their weapons, but it is too late. They are cut down in a flash. The Separatists bang on the doors and Newt and Rune Kako flee under a table in the conference room. Bodies drop, screams are cut short as Sand Hill, the head of the banking clan, dies. As Paga the Lesser loses his head, Wat Tambor, Shumai, and the other Separatists follow Gunray into the conference room. After everyone in the main room is killed, Anakin advances to the conference room to finish off the last of them. In the final film, you see Anakin about to enter this room along with Wat Tambor there in the background. You never see Anakin in this room as it cuts away to Palpatine's speech, and when it returns, Anakin is back in the main room killing Gunray. And that's how the scene ends. We were originally meant to see Anakin slaughter Wat Tambor and all those other Separatists that I mentioned earlier, the first of which being Rune Hako. This dude Rune Hako tries to run but is trapped by a dead end. So this is where things start to get a little bit complicated. If you remember back to the final cut, Rune Hako never makes it into the conference room. He screams, no, no, and is cut down by Anakin in that first main room. However, it turns out that this is just a little editing trick. This shot of Rune talking actually was recorded in the conference room, but they just reused it for a portion in the main room. You can see in the finished film that when Anakin slashes Rune, it's not even Rune's body that falls down. Rune has a very distinguishable hat, and this clearly is not him. In fact, we know this is not him because during the Anakin and Obi-Wan fight, we literally can see Rune's body in the conference room. This is him. This is his hat in the same place where the original script said he was supposed to be killed. George Lucas thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Rune Hako actually had a bit more dialogue before Anakin strikes him down. He was supposed to say, stop, enough, this is not right. After the death of his lieutenant, Newt Gunray would crawl out from under the table and call in a few destroyer droids. Before making their way in, Anakin is able to take out Wat Tambor along with Shuma. In the book Making of Revenge of the Sith, there's this excerpt where George is showing Hayden photos of all the Separatists he is going to be killing. He mentions that Shumai will be killed on the conference room table, and then says, it's always nice to get to know the people you're killing. This quote really just made me laugh. It's one of those typical goofy things that George Lucas says, and I can literally hear it inside my head. 
But anyway, after these guys are dead, the droidicas finally roll into the room, giving Viceroy Gunray the chance to escape back to the main room. The script reads, Destroyer droids appear in the doorway and blast away, causing total destruction. When the firing is over, Anakin is gone. Blown away? No. Anakin drops from the ceiling behind the two droids and cuts them to pieces before they know it hit them. I really wish this part was included. The droidicas are definitely my favorite out of all the droids. They're really the only ones that gave the Jedi a run for their money, and it shows they're a legitimate threat. Not that it would add that much to the film, but it would have been cool to see Vader do this. So afterwards, Anakin finally chases Gunray, the lone survivor, into the main room. In this version, it seems like Gunray is the closest to evading Anakin, as he is constantly hiding and running back and forth and calling in backup. It's fitting that Anakin killed him last, as he was the Separatist whom Anakin hated the most and held a personal grudge against, for constantly having to defend against his assassination attempts. I almost wonder if he purposely killed him last to make him feel as much terror and fear as possible. Lord Sidious promised us peace! The only one- <laughs> After killing the final Separatist, Anakin would ruthlessly reply, there was a gamble in the transmission. He promised you in pieces. While this would have been a pretty witty remark, I could see why it was taken out, as it takes away from the dark tone of the scene. Although Revenge of the Sith is an awesome movie with or without these scenes, I think it would have been nice to have seen some extra shots of Vader doing the things we all wanted to see Vader do. Let me know if you also really wish this stuff was included. In order to enter the giveaway for this $400 Darth Vader lightsaber, you must be subscribed to my channel, and you also have to be one of the first 10,000 people to both like and comment on this video. May the Force be with you.